Now we're going to cover the two other granulocytes that can also be triggered by IgE, first eosinophils, and then basophils. So eosinophils and basophils, both granulocytes, you're going to find them resident in your tissues, such as your, your connective tissues. So what's different about these cells? Well, eosinophils, um, they are very toxic cells. So we actually keep their numbers very low in the body. If we detect an infection, we need to call for help. You can increase the production of eosinophils, but there are typically not a large number of them on hand um, in order to recognize and attack a pathogen. So we keep the number of eosinophils very low in the body because they're such toxic cells. Eosinophils can recognize uh, pathogens via IgE, via an FC epsilon receptor. The thing about eosinophils is though that their FC epsilon receptors are inducible. So we keep them off unless we know they're for sure there's an infection going on. So unlike mast cells, where they constitutively, constitutively express FC epsilon receptors and can be decorated with IgE at all times, eosinophils do not have their FC epsilon receptors turned on unless they detect an infection. How do they detect an infection? Things like toll-like receptors. So eosinophils express many of the toll-like receptors. When toll-like receptors engage their ligands, that can signal the eosinophil to turn on the production of FC epsilon 1 receptors. Now that that has happened, if we in fact are also making IgE at the same time, IgE will attach to the FC epsilon receptor 1. This will allow us to identify and recognize a pathogen, such as a parasite, and trigger FC epsilon receptor crosslinking and degranulation. So these eosinophils degranulate. What are they going to release? Well, they have a lot of toxins in them, and these are toxins that affect the multicellular organisms like parasites. These toxins are also harmful to the host. So eosinophils will do damage to the host tissue as well as the parasitic organism. And that's why we keep these numbers very low because these toxins do damage the body as well. They release proteases just like uh, mast cells. They release cytokines and leukotrienes just like mast cells. So they're gonna promote inflammation. The cytokines, for example, include GMCSF which will go to the bone marrow and increase the production of granulocytes and monocytes. Uh, another molecule that is um, released by eosinophils when they're activated is something called major basic protein. This is a toxin. It will um, harm uh, multicellular organisms such as parasites and can actually also trigger mast cells to degranulate and induce inflammation. So eosinophils actually will talk to mast cells at this point as well. So uh, eosinophils can induce a lot of damage and a lot of inflammation to the body. Um, but again, helpful in removing large multicellular organisms. Last um, granulocytes that we'll talk about now are basophils. And these are the rarest of the immune cells, one of the rarest. And so not a lot of is known about them. It's really difficult to study basophils. Um, what do we know about them? We know that they are granulocytes, that again, we're going to find them in our connective tissue, they're resident. We know that they can recognize pathogens using their FC epsilon receptors only after they're turned on. Again, that these are inducible. So uh, basophils are also thought to be the source of um, cytokines that drive the TH2 response that help drive B cells to make IgE. And again, it's not very clear why basophils at recognize a pathogen, activate, and then release IL-4, but basophils somehow can sense and detect uh, parasitic infections. And when they detect and sense parasitic infections, they will release IL-4 and IL-13, which begin the process of making CD4 T cells differentiate into Th2 effector T cells, which will then trigger naive B cells to isotype switch to making IgE. So it is believed that basophils um, help initiate this process of producing IgE. Once IgE is made, 
uh, it can go and bind the uh, FC epsilon receptors on the surface of basophils, which will allow them to degranulate just like mast cells. And in fact, uh, the granules in basophils are very similar to the granules in mast cells. So basophils um, can de detect infection using their FC epsilon receptors. They also have toll-like receptors on them as well. And like I said, not a lot is known about basophils because they are so rare, it's very difficult to study them. Um, but that just covers the role of the eosinophils and basophils. And again, you can see they're similar to mast cells in that they have granules and they will degranulate after recognizing a pathogen using their epsilon receptor.